Docker images are often much larger than they have to be, especially if you have a small application in a language that compiles to a binary, you really don't need to have a 700 megabyte Docker image. And it's incredibly easy to reduce the size drastically from about 700 megabytes to less than 10 megabytes using a multi-stage Docker file, yet not too many people seem to know about it. So I wanna show you exactly what you have to do. In my example here, I have a tiny HTTP server written in Go. So there's just one handler here. It just responds with hello from the web server and just uh, listens on um, this root URL here. So I've already Dockerized it in a bad way. So I have a Docker file like you see many out there. It's from Golang in this uh, way 1.8 just happened to be one that I had the base images cached here and um, setting a work directory, copying this main.go file in there, doing a build and then in my command section running the web server. So if I do a docker build, tag it with web server and do a docker run, expose those ports on 8080 web server and just switch to my browser, you can see I get this response. However, if I do a docker images, that is if I can type images, docker images and grab for this one, the web server, you can see that this beautiful web server is 705 megabytes, and that is way too big for just one API handler. So oftentimes when you ask, what can you do to, to reduce the size? The first thing that people will, will say is, well, yes, this, um, this uh, base image that's used here is way too big. You should use something like Alpine. Okay, yeah, that's a fair thing to say, but I don't think it really helps too much. So if I go back up here and build this again, and then inspect them again, we went down from 700 to 382 megabytes. So for changing just one word in a Docker file, that's already pretty good, almost a 50% reduction, but I think we can go down much, much smaller. So what is the idea behind the multi-stage Docker file? In a compiled language like this one, we need quite some stuff in our build container. If we install dependencies with uh, go dep, which we aren't really doing here, um, but we could be doing. We need a git client because we need to be able to do a git clone. Git clone internally needs SSH. You need to have some trusted root certificates somewhere. So there's there's really quite some, some stuff that you need to build your app. But in the end, you end up with what is a tiny binary. So couldn't we just use that tiny binary and remove the rest from our container? And by remove, I don't mean manually delete it, but just start with a smaller container. So really the only thing we have to do is tag this container. In this case, I'll tag it as builder. You don't have to do the tagging, but it makes it easier to read. So I think it's a good thing to do. And then you can start a new container. And this one, I'll just start from a standard Alpine image that um, should be pretty small. Of course, in real life, you would want the better versioning here. But for me, that's that's fine right now. Then let's define a work dear just slash app maybe, and let's copy something. And where do we want to copy from? From our previous container. So this from statement here actually starts a new container from, not from scratch, but sort of from this base image here. But still we can copy from an old one. So let's copy from the this container that we tagged as builder. And what we want to copy is the source folder app. And in there, yeah, let's just copy the entire folder and let's copy it to app. So let's give that a shot. Okay, so first maybe let's verify whether it still works. Cool, that's still there, that's good. So now that it worked, let's take a look at how big it is. Huh, 10.6 megabytes. So that really is a drastic improvement. So if we go up here, let's see what actually happened. So as always, each step in a, in a Docker file creates a new layer. And here we're building it. And then here, instead of continuing in this container, we're basically throwing the old container away, starting a new container, and having a very simple container that just has a very small Alpine image um, as a work directory defined and really just copies in one file. Actually, in, in case here, we're copying the entire folder. So we're also co copying the main.go file. That's actually more than we need, but yeah, don't really need to over optimize this. Speaking of over optimization, if you really want to drastically reduce the size even more, we wouldn't even need an entire Alpine here. Uh, you could go from scratch, 
but then you'd have to uh, change the way you compile this Go binary because this one is now compiled in an Alpine container, uh, so it'll only work in an Alpine container. You'd have to to build slightly differently, and also you lose a lot of debugging functionality by not having a full operating system here because um, Alpine you still have an SH shell, so you can still have more debugging abilities and of course you can install packages because Alpine has a package manager so I really prefer the way to go with Alpine here uh, just to show it let's put from scratch in here I won't be able to run it but I'll still be able to build it so we can just verify how small it would be in this case and it would be 6.6 uh, .6 megabytes so you could save another 30 percent but really I don't see that much point in optimizing any further here Slightly different topic today, but I've come across some um, cool Docker tips that I wanted to share, and I thought let's start with something that's uh, super easy, but not too many people know about it. So if you're interested in more Docker stuff, which helps you with Kubernetes as well, of course, make sure you subscribe right now so you don't miss them. And see you next time. Thanks for watching.